What is up everybody, how's it going? This is Seth Kniep, Kniep in It Real. Uh, today I'm going to teach you the most important piece for converting your Amazon listing, and that is photography. Uh, this is the most in-depth training I've ever done live to the public, so get ready, take notes, we're gonna go really deep, and I'm very excited to be here. Now, hey everybody, great to see you guys. As you have questions, feel free to chat those in the chat box. One of our team members will be answering questions for you as we go along so I can focus on bringing you the content. And I will be sharing my screen for quite a bit of this just so that you can see the content that I am presenting. Now, before I jump in to photos, and remember guys, photos is the most important thing for your Amazon listing to convert into sales. So my goal after this training is you know how to use photos to make more money so that money can create margins so you can do the things you love with the people you love. But first, let me just do a very brief introduction on who I am for those of you guys who don't know me. It'll just take like two minutes. Hi everybody, my name is Seth Kniep, Can you be it real? I am inspired and motivated by these gems right here. Uh, this is why I do what I do. This is why I left Apple, the richest company in the world at the time, and I set out with a single dime, and I doubled it 20 times into over $100,000, became a multi-million dollar Amazon seller, started a coaching company, now we build Amazon stores for people, and we do investments around the world. Uh, this was my third or fourth dime double. We, tra we translated it up to an even amount so it'd be easy. So we did $1, $2, $4, etc. And this was at a fire station with a guy who randomly said, Seth, I'll do this. I believe in what you're doing. And so he helped me to get from $1 to $2. I had to change who I was on the inside to learn. If you want to grow something huge, you have to first be faithful with little, then you can learn to be faithful with much. Uh, Amazon flew me to the headquarters a few years ago. They wanted to consult with me and only nine other top Amazon sellers in the US on areas that they wanted to improve on their third-party seller platform. Although I had to sign an NDA, I can't tell you all the details. I will say a lot of the amazing things they've rolled out with over the last few months is largely a result of the topics in that meeting, that closed door meeting we had all day at their headquarters in Seattle. I wanna introduce you to a few people. You may or may not recognize them. This is Jesse Jennifer. He's gonna be here in Austin at our Just When I'm headquarters on Saturday. Uh, we're gonna be meeting right here. Uh, he is a seven-figure Amazon seller. He lives in Costa Rica. When I went on vacation with my family to Costa Rica, we got to hang out quite a bit, talk about Amazon life, business, struggles, all sorts of stuff. Uh, this is Daniel Alvarez. Uh, he is a Just When I'm student as well. He did, not 0.1 million, hold on, let me fix that. Sorry, guys. 1.1 million in the last 12 months. Um, by the way, you can Google these people or look them up on Instagram. They're really cool. They'll be happy to talk to you. Uh, Daniel Alvarez, I just met with him and my wife. He was teaching us rollerblading skills while we were in Miami, where I was celebrating my 22nd wedding anniversary with KK. Um, someone else I want you to meet is David Lopez. For those of you guys who speak Spanish, you need to talk to him. He is my third student. He is now a multi-million dollar seller. He owns eight properties in Florida. These are investment properties. He also builds Amazon stores for investors and trains people how to sell on Amazon and sells on Amazon himself as well. Uh, this is Stefano Fratella. Uh, he is a new friend. He owns the oldest restaurant in Italy. I'm gonna destroy the name, but I'm gonna say it the best I can. Ristorante La Sibilla Tivoli. It is in Rome. It is the oldest restaurant. For those of you guys who follow me on Instagram, this guy is an incredible man. He has become somewhat of a mentor to me since I met him just a few days ago, who's helping me to understand the different markets and how life works when it comes to investment. Extremely wealthy individual and a lot to learn from. The reason I share these with you is two things. One, because we're excited to share the results of what we do, but also when you build money, it gives you margin, it allows you freedom. I mean, I met with this guy while I'm in our condo that we own in South Beach, Miami, while I'm celebrating my 22nd wedding anniversary working on Amazon, creating content, going rollerblading and meeting this, this guy. That is margin. And that is what I wanna teach you guys today via photos. Now, just five years ago, my life was totally different. I was $24,000 in debt. This is one of our homes, my first home that I foreclosed, well, the only home I foreclosed on, but my very first home and it foreclosed. I almost lost my marriage. We had to go to therapy. It's extremely important, I think, if you're struggling. Like, we were ready to break up, and one of the reasons we didn't is we just said, you know what, we need to take ownership for our issues. Um, I look to caffeine for happiness every day. 
You know, you could almost call me a pill popper even though I didn't pop pills. I was looking for something to fix the broken places inside of me instead of taking ownership for my success. I hated my job. This is a picture of me not that long ago now. Um, working from home for the richest company in the world and my manager made my life miserable and so I decided to do something about it because I dreaded my boss and it made my life very miserable. Uh, this is my oldest child who's 21 years old today. I have four children. The youngest just turned 17. All three others are adults. And one day, this, my daughter, she said to me, she said, Pop, you look really sad. And I walked out of the room and I just wept because I, would, I was at such a low time in my life, I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was drinking broken, broken glass and I needed to make a change. And that's why I set out with the dime. That's why our logo is represented by a tree because the tree represents a small seed and it can grow into something absolutely huge if you want it to. This is a picture of me and, not me and KK in this picture, but this is products that we would buy at Walmart, at yard sales, at Goodwill, anywhere we could at five and below and we would just resell doing arbitrage and that led us into private label and private label led us into growing wealth and that eventually drew the attention of people who wanted to learn from us so we began to teach people what we do so they too also could learn how to sell on amazon and it became a whole new business for us this is me going door to door when a product wouldn't sell i would sell it in my neighborhood i needed to get the guts i needed to learn how to do uncomfortable things so I could have the margin to enjoy comfort later on. As Dave Ramsey says, live like no one else so that someday you can live like no one else. And now I'm ready to teach you the number one most important thing for your Amazon listing, and that is photos. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to get photos that blow the minds of your customers. Photos are incredibly important, so here we go. What impacts conversion rate on an Amazon listing? Now, price does have an impact, but it is limited by the market. You might sell a product and for a while it's selling great and then all of a sudden it sells slow because all your competitors dropped their price. That could be the result of you picking a category that is too price sensitive or even a product. With Just One Dime, we teach people how to be aware of that. You only, even though you can control the price in your listing, you cannot control the market and the market has a big impact on what price will seem reasonable to a shopper. As I said, price is subject to change. So price does impact conversion, but you have less control over it. What about reviews? Reviews are very important, yet you have no control over them, just like somewhat you don't have control over the price. You can't control or make someone leave you a positive or critical review. People have tried to incentivize that, they've gotten in trouble for that, but there's only so much you can do with reviews and reviews are still prone to fraud today. I don't know if you guys watched the Instagram I did a few weeks ago, but this guy sent me an email and he wakes up one morning and one of his competitors all of a sudden has tens of thousands of reviews on his listing. And he says, Seth, how in the world do they do this? Well, I know exactly how, and I'm not gonna teach you today, but there is a challenge with reviews because you can't control them. But what about copy? In other words, the description in your listing and photos. Well, they're visual. It's what people see, and visual is extremely important. They tell a story that's extremely important, and you can repeatedly improve them, and you have complete control over them. Here is my point. As you build a business, build it in a way that, so that the elements that it depends on, you know, what, what, what causes your product to sell is something you can control. In other words, if the conversion of your product depends on reviews mainly to sell, then you either didn't differentiate your product well enough or you picked the wrong product. If the conversion, by conversion I mean sales, if the sales of your product depends on the price, then you picked a very bad product or you didn't differentiate it well enough because, again, it is something you have little control over. Even though you control the price in your listing, you can't control the market, what the market is willing to pay for that product that you launched. But when it comes to photos, when it comes to copy, you have 100% control. It's kind of like the old uh, wise saying, focus on the things you can control, not the things you can't, if you don't want to live a frustrated life. And this is so true when selling on Amazon. Let's talk a little bit about the conversion power of copy in photos. Now, bullet points, the bullet points in your listing have an impact, but it is fairly low. 
Your description has a medium impact. Your title has a high impact, very, very high. Your title is extremely important, but your photos have an incalculable impact. I've seen multiple Amazon experts try to measure or quantify the power of a photo. It's so powerful, it's hard to do because when people buy from a photo, they're buying emotionally, they're buying experientially, and they're gonna see a photo and interpret it in a different way than Bobby McGee would or Lucy Pickleberry. That's why it's really hard to measure how powerful they are, but what we do know is it is extremely powerful for the conversion of your listing. The human brain processes an entire image in 13 milliseconds. In other words, if you take a second and you cut it up into a thousand pieces, just take 13 of those slots. That's how long it takes for the human brain to process an image. 90% of all information transmitted through the brain is visual. That means when someone looks at your listing, they're gonna process the photo way faster than even the title. If you, haven't, if you aren't investing in absolutely stunning photos, you are bypassing 90% of the senses customers use to decide if they want your product. You wanna see more sales, you wanna make more money, then fix your photos. I have had so many Amazon sellers message me and say, Seth, well, what's wrong with my listing? It's not selling, I did everything right. And ask a simple question. I say, are your photos stunning? Well, no, but they're pretty good. No, no, are they absolutely stunning? Well, they're, you know, no. If your photos aren't stunning, then you're wasting your time. Take time to get photos good. Now today I'm gonna to show you 15 tips you can apply to having amazing photos for your Amazon listing. Now, when you get your photos collected, make sure they accomplish three objectives. There are three things you want your photos to do. Number one, they must attract the shopper. They gotta get the shopper's attention. Number two, they must solve a relevant problem for the shopper. Just wait, 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 wait a sec. You're telling me if I just look at that picture, it already solves a problem for me in my mind. Yes, I am. And number three, they must persuade the shopper to buy. Now notice I didn't start with persuade. It's hard to persuade someone who didn't even notice you. And notice I didn't start with solve. It's really hard to convince someone you can solve something for them if they haven't even noticed you. You must start with attraction. So attract, solve, persuade. In attraction, you grab their attention with your featured photo and they stop scrolling. You see, this is after they already went onto Amazon and they searched that keyword and boom, there's all these listings showing up. Your job is to stop the scrolling finger or the finger that scrolls on the trackpad, whatever you use. Now for solve, you're gonna show the best solution with your featured photo. In other words, the goal of this now is to get them to click on the listing. First, you grab their attention, they stop scrolling. Second, you show value, so they click on the listing. And third, you show massive value through all of the photos. And this persuades them to add the product to their cart and that's how you make money. Remember, people can't pick up and smell and taste and lick and squeeze and drop and bounce and throw in the air and catch your product. All they have is their eyes to use to buy your product. Attract is number one, then solve, then persuade. So first we're gonna start with attract. Now, I want you to ask yourself a very simple question when you get the photos for your Amazon listing. How will my featured photo attract the Amazon shopper's attention? That's it. Which one of these photos, number one, two, three, or four, grabbed your attention first? I'd love to know, which one? I'm guessing it was the one with the gecko. I'm not saying you have to put a gecko on your listing and your, on your photo of your product in order to grab someone's attention. But why is it that I just, my eyes naturally went to the one with the gecko because something about it was different. I mean, no other listing has that green on it. There's something about it that drew my attention. So your first job is to just get me to notice. You gotta get my attention somehow. You know when you're watching a movie, and it's so cool when they do this, and everything's in black and white, but one person is wearing this beautiful yellow coat and yellow hat, and they just stand out. 
you know, when I just got back from Miami a few days ago with my wife, we're at our condo there, right there in South Beach, and there's this photo above the bed, and it's a picture of London back in the 1940s. All these old cars, and these people, and hats, and they got the fedoras, and they're walking down the street, but right in the middle, keep in mind, it's a black and white photo, is a red bus like the classic London bus, the same kind of bus that Dan Rogers and I did a couple of videos on training you guys on YouTube, driving through the streets of, streets of London. It catches your attention. You must capture their attention. Keep in mind, your customer is very distracted. You know, here's how we often think our customers go shopping for our products. You know, it's the guy and his girlfriend sitting there on a beautiful day and she's got her credit card out, she's smiling, and they're just pouring over your listing so excited to buy it, but here's reality. Kids are distracting the mom, complaining, whining, arguing. The doorbell rings, the phone rings, something's happening, she's worried about something, and she's trying to buy something at the same time. So think like this, if I was supposed to grab the attention of someone who's very distracted, what would I do? That's what your featured photo needs to do, like this picture. Now let's go to the second question you must ask yourself for your photo. What problem does my featured photo solve for the Amazon shopper? It must solve some kind of problem. Now there are two tips I want you to keep in mind. Number one, your featured photo must both attract and problem solve all within one second. It must do both. I mean, if you look at this picture here, we see an attractive picture of a battery pack and I can see the blue lights. It looks clean, it's red and black, it stands out. In fact, if I was to search this on Amazon, it probably would grab my attention and it's kind of obvious that it has something to do with power because of the blue lights. It's the little subtle things that can add so much value to a photo. But you never want to let artistic uniqueness eclipse the value as you can see here. There are some Amazon sellers, they try so hard to grab attention that it actually eclipses the value it is supposed to be showing and therefore their listing does not convert. In other words, there's something as, there is such, there is something true called overdoing it when you're trying to attract. You must also show value. You must solve a problem. Now I asked a lot of people, I sent this around to many people and I said, you know, which of these boots would you buy? Number one, two, three, or four? And the vast majority of them said three. Well, why is that? Well, let's take a moment and look at it for a second. The leather looks the most real. Number two looks a little too shiny. Number one is a bad picture. There's a lot of shadows. And number four just looks like a Halloween costume for someone who wants to look like a pirate. But number three, it's just right. Like it has some shadow, yes, but it only just accentuates the fact that there is depth to this boot. There is a 3D element to it. It has those brass looking buckles, which adds value. None of the others have those buckles. It has the fold over at the top. It's also taken at an angle that's extremely attractive. The fourth picture is terrible. It makes someone look like they're walking like a duck. The first one looks like it's a wizard and he's floating above the ground. Second one angle isn't too bad, but it's way too much glossy reflection going on there. That photo wins the day, even though it's the most expensive. Now, let me show you something else. Which one of these do you think sells the best? Well, it's kind of obvious, isn't it, Seth? It says bestseller, yeah. But why, before it ever got that bestseller badge, even without the Amazon's Choice badge, why does it sell better than any one of the other, uh, of the other three pictures? Well, there's several reasons. Number one, it grabs your attention. An attractive woman holding the carrier with the dog. The pink stands out. Notice the pink on the fourth picture is much more faded. There's no pink on the third. And I'm not saying it has to be pink, but I'm saying when you compare it to its surroundings, it grabs your attention. And the dog is really cute. Now the dog in picture number three is pretty cute too, but this one sells better. And you know what's crazy? It's the most expensive and yet it sells the best. In other words, this Amazon seller did such a good job that they have a product that doesn't depend primarily on the price in order to sell well. And as a result, 
it got more reviews, it became the best seller because they did it right from the beginning. Don't be deceived and say, well, Seth, of course it sells the best. It's got the most reviews. The question is, why does it have the most reviews? And that's because that featured photo stands out. Plus, look at the value. Look at the three little circular images next to it. It's already showing you that there's much more to this dog sling carrier than meets the human eye. Even without knowing what those three round images mean, if you first glanced at it, you might not know immediately. It immediately implies value and that's powerful. Third, we talked about attract, we talked about solve. You must attract their attention, you must solve a problem. Third, you must persuade them. You must persuade them to add the product to their cart. So ask yourself a simple question. What value do all my photos show to the Amazon shopper? I'm gonna briefly walk through Amazon's requirements for your featured image. Number one, it must be a photograph of the product being sold. No drawings or illustrations. Now, I doubt this is an issue for any of you, but if you love drawing, you love illustrations, I highly recommend you set aside that skill when creating your Amazon listing. Number two, no gratuitous, in other words, irrelevant or uncalled for, or confusing additional objects. In other words, they all must complement the main item. Number three, it must be in focus. Well, that's a given. Professionally lit and photographed or scanned. I love it when they say scanned, like who is gonna scan a picture? That's just weird. With realistic color and smooth edges. I mean, basically make your photo badass must fill 85% or more of the image frame. Remember, you have real estate here. Just like real estate in real life, you have real estate on Amazon. You want to leverage every square inch you can, every pixel. So if you have a white background, which is a requirement for your featured photo, you need to fill at least 85%. Now, don't see these as restrictions. See these as actually helping you sell more. Amazon wants you to sell more because the more you sell, the more money they make. Third-party sellers make them a lot more money than Amazon's own sales do based on the latest report. Next, the background must be pure white. RGB of 255, 255, 255, that's a given. Must not contain additional text, graphics, or inset images. Now, this is a gray area. That's why I got the thinking emoji there because some people still do it. I've tried it many times and I've never seen Amazon derank a listing for it. However, I will tell you directly in their requirements you're not supposed to. <laughs> now, there are five main types of photos that you want to put onto your Amazon listing. Number one, you have your featured photo. This is gonna show, feature your image or your product the best way possible. Depending on the kind of product, it might include a human. I mean, if I was featuring the Just When I'm shirt, then I might be a human in the picture. As a general rule, you won't have a human in that picture unless it's depends on that, like in this situation, to demonstrate this product. Number two, you must have lifestyle photos. In other words, two to three of them, as a general rule, are gonna show the product being used. Remember, people are going to personalize. They're gonna look at it and imagine themselves using it. Number three, you want one to two tech spec photos. In other words, this photo shows the different elements of the product that you couldn't just know through looking at a picture. So it says things like, slip resistance pads or back heel plate or optimum stretching angle or 12 fits up to size 12 us shoe or max weight 250 pounds this shows authority this shows that you were excellent at what you do next you need a couple product images well that's a given yes it is but you need a couple images showing the product from a different angle some of these could be 3d renderings and i will talk about that in a minute Next, you need a competitor comparison or size reference photo. In other words, if it's hard for the customer to imagine the size and they're thinking it's gonna be jumbo and it's a little tiny you know, product in the palm of their hand, they're gonna be disappointed, probably leave you a critical review because people leave negative reviews not because your product didn't have high quality, but because you didn't meet expectations. So you wanna set their expectation from the beginning. This does a great job. I can quickly see, based on the profile of the man, the size of this product, and it's pretty obvious. I like what Enzo Adams says. He says, you don't take a photograph, you make it. A photograph's goal on your listing is to help your customer, to help me, to experience, to experience using the product. You want me to personify, to personalize it, to imagine, to fantasize using your product. It doesn't mean I'm physically gonna think, okay, if it's, a, you know, if it's a basketball, oh yeah, I see myself dribbling. And 
I'm not gonna go that far. I'm just gonna see it and I need to um, like instinctively, subconsciously, immediately, oh yeah, I could totally go to town with that basketball. See what I mean? You want, that's the feeling you wanna create. So ask a simple question. How can I help the Amazon shopper feel like they are using the product just by looking at it? You only get one shot, guys. In less than a second, they will decide whether or not they're gonna even notice your listing. In less than a second, they will decide if they're gonna even click on your listing. And in a matter of just maybe a couple minutes, usually less, they will decide whether or not they will add that product to their cart. And your photography is your number one shot to make that work. 15 tips for helping you, the Amazon seller, in other words, the Amazon shopper, <laughs> experience your product. 15 things, you can write these down, you can paint them on your wall, get out your notepad. I'm gonna give you 15 things right now for helping this shopper experience your product so that your listing converts into sales before they even buy it. Tip number one, take photos from your customer's point of view. This is the number one mistake Amazon sellers make because they don't have photography experience, okay? Now, you could even hire a professional photographer, but you need to make sure they do this. This is boring. Look at that. This is boring. Like, it's just so plain. Now that's engaging. I mean, how often does someone use a computer staring at the back? Now, the other direction, absolutely, I can see myself sitting there typing away, though it would probably be a Mac. I still like Apple. This is boring. It's so flat. I mean, how many people in the world look at a mug from that perspective, unless it's my, you know, eight-year-old kid standing there and it's up here at the counter? But that is engaging. Man, it almost looks like an oat milk latte, just a little extra espresso. About to read the paper and wow. Because that's the angle from the customer's point of view. Tip number two, if the product is wearable, definitely use a model. Now, I think this should go without saying, but I still find Amazon sellers who don't use models. Maybe they were overwhelmed. Maybe th they thought it would be too expensive. I got a simple question. If you wanna make money, then you have to be willing to invest in your business, just like you're willing to invest in you. You don't make something out of nothing. The, 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 the idea of investment is so important. You are putting money into something so it will serve you. Here's something that might help. You're not really just selling your product. You're selling your listing. Look, the listing is what holds your product. It's the case. I will never see your product if you don't have a listing. So you need to invest in the listing. Let me put it this way. There's some Amazon sellers, they say, Seth, I launched a product, yeah? We got tons of sales, yeah? How are your profits? We, were, we broke even. I'm so disappointed. I'm like, why are you disappointed? Well, because we didn't make any money on the launch. Are you gonna buy a new batch of inventory? Are you running out of inventory? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna buy a new batch of inventory. We have enough to buy more, but we're not profitable because we spent so much on PPC. And ask him a simple question. If I type in the main keyword for your listing, where does your product show up? Incognito window on Google Chrome. Oh, it's like second or third listing. Ha! Okay, this is good. What you're telling me is you invested in that listing and now your listing is ranking on the first page of search results and you're complaining? That is a good thing. You invested in your listing. Your listing has a ranking. Now you can make money because your PPC costs will go down over time as you optimize the listing and as you understand the kind of keywords that cost you money versus the ones that make you money. This, my friends, is an investment in your listing. If the product is wearable, use a model. So look at this picture. This is really boring. It, I'm struggling to know what it is, but that is engaging. Now I see the product on a human being. I can, oh, you know, if I want a hairband, I can kind of imagine this is how it would look. Well, maybe not look like that on me because I'm just a dude, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying, right? You must show them how it will look on them. Give them a feeling so they can identify with it. Meh. You know, that sweater looks pretty flat. Engaging. Now it looks cool in this guy. It looks comfortable. It looks like, hey, that would be a nice sweater to wear. You see the difference? It's so subtle, but it's so powerful. Tip number three, 
Out of 15 tips, so we're now on tip or step number three. Use 3D renders for plastic, metal, or smooth products. Now, how many of you guys watched the Canadian It Real Jodcast on the Seth Kniep YouTube channel? Not this YouTube channel you're on, on the Seth Kniep one. Did you guys watch that? If you haven't, you need to go here, youtube.com slash Seth, S-E-T-H, Kniep, K-N-I-E-P. Because I have an entire interview with Anthony and he does such an awesome job of going really deep on 3Ds. He talks about this a lot. YouTube.com slash Seth Kniep, K-N-I-E-P. Here's an example of a 3D render that you can, two examples of 3D renders. These are not real pictures. That is not a real ring. That is not a real toolbox. Now, someone's gonna argue, well, Seth, didn't Amazon say it has to be a photo? Yes. Do they say you can't use 3D renders? Nope. Do people use them all the time? Yes. So is this a gray line? Yes. <laughs> so you make your own choice. I've never seen Amazon even slap the hand of anyone who did a great 3D render. Now, the reason I say make sure you do it if it's plastic, metal, or smooth is because 3D renders look terrible on fabric. They're really hard to create. 3D renders are powerful. Look at this. You can make it look so crystal clean and smooth. And here's a cool thing. When a 3D render is done, they're doing a 3D. That means the majority of the investment you make on the person creating the, the 3D model is just the first, it, it's the actual image itself. So the whole thing is created. That's like 80% of the work. Then all they have to do is turn it, take a picture, turn it, take a picture, turn it, take a picture in the software. Once the 3D render is created, you can get any angle you want. So you can get 50 pictures out of it if you wanted to. Now I don't re recommend that they all be 3D renders, especially the lifestyle. I've seen people do this and man, you don't wanna jack this up and make it look like a Photoshop. Make sure it's really crystal, crystal clean, but you can do 3D renders. And I will show you too, there are situations where you should Photoshop a background to create an experience instead of flying to Big Sky Montana to get the background you want, which will save you a lot of money. Tip number four for photos that blow the minds of your Amazon customers, show all variations in one image. Again, a lot of Amazon sellers don't do this. I don't know why. Look at this. If you are shopping for socks, chances are you're going to want to look at options. I mean, if your only option was the first pair, why would you spend any time on the listing? You must show variations in one of your images so it immediately tells your shopper, wow, they have a lot of options for me. Tip number five, use organization and symmetry. Use organization and symmetry. For all of you OCD people out there, you're gonna love this one, but it's actually true regardless of how your brain works. This is very important. Look at this, you guys. Now, it looks pretty cool. This is a nice little coffee machine for making lattes and espressos, but it kind of looks like it fell out of the sky, doesn't it? Now look at that. Now that's organized, that's clean. And even though the shopper doesn't consciously know the difference, like why do I not like this picture as much? You know why, because now you're gonna be the expert, because I'm teaching you, it's organized. People like organization, it looks safe, it looks structured. Remember, people buy emotionally. I don't care how intellectual people like to try to say they are, the truth is, the vast majority of the time, it's how you make them feel about the product. That's how you get the sale. That is why the old idea that really good salespeople are talkative, that's not true. They just know people. Some of the most quiet people in the world are great salesmen and saleswomen. Tip number six, show intricate detail and texture. I love this one because it is so powerful. Look at this. In one picture, I can see the entire rug, but I can see that little red circle, which tells me in the next picture, boom. Aha, I can already feel those fluffy threads between my toes. That just makes me feel comfortable. I wanna put my feet on that rug. That's already creating an experience for me. I'm more likely to give you money, to part with money, so I can have that cozy toe rug. Tip number seven. We got 15 tips, ladies and gentlemen. Tip number seven, use colors that pop and props that enhance. Let me show you. 
Here you have an example of colors that pop. I'm mean, gonna just look at the photo, it just looks good. I mean, the colors, they blend. They all have sort of an earthy tone. No colors are clashing. Did you know that some colors just don't go good together? Some people know that some people don't. Every now and then I see a guy with a orange tie and a red shirt, and it just does something bad to the brain. Don't do this with your photos. Be smart. Do good combinations. Here's another example. It almost looks like breakfast. Like the sun's coming in through the window and you can see the shadow and it feels warm like the beginning of the day. I'm already starting to experience this cup, even though I have absolutely no interest in buying that kind of cup because it's not my style, this will work for some people. Tip number eight for 15 tips on how to create photos that blow the minds of your customers on Amazon. Show superb retail packaging. Ladies and gentlemen, the days of polybags poly are just pretty much about gone. I mean, if you're just gonna, if you're gonna take a beautiful product and just throw it into a poly bag, I'm like, do you realize what you're competing against? They worked back in the day. Um, I will never do a poly bag again unless it's an absolutely beautiful bag. Retail packaging is so important. The funny thing is, when I bought my first Apple products, I would open up that box, I would take out the computer, I would turn it on, it had, remember that old hello video? I missed that, that was such a great video. It makes me feel nostalgic and I'd watch the video. I just loved my Mac. But I would keep the box for weeks. I had this place in the garage where I kept all my Apple boxes. It's kind of dumb, it's like, my wife's like, Seth, why are you keeping those? Uh, if we travel sometime, we need to put them in a safe place. <laughs> Seth, it doesn't even make any sense. Like we have other ways you could put it in a bag. You got your backpack, like you got your suitcase with padding. I kept it because I felt like I was throwing something of value away. That's how good you want your retail packaging to be. But Seth, that's not real value. No, it's not, it's perceived value. But perceived value is just as important. Because remember, people are buying with their eyes. And once they receive it, not just see it, but receive it, it'll even increase their experience more, which helps to build your brand. Here's an example. Very quickly, I can see this chap with the posture corrector, but I can also see the box. And the box tells me, you know, if you just took away the picture of the box, it's kind of a weird picture, just being honest. Nothing against this dude, I'm sure he's a nice guy. But it's just kind of a weird, like, are we selling the pants? Are we selling the, <laughs> the shoulder corrector? <laughs> the box makes it official somehow. See how important that is? How about this one? I mean, the box is almost as beautiful as the light is, the wake up light alarm clock. It just makes it official. But set that costs more, uh-huh, it does. But it's an investment in your customer and they will get, send you money so they can have it because you did due diligence, did a great job to show that you are a serious brand. I'm gonna tell you guys a really quick story before I go on. So two, three days ago, well, yesterday I was in Miami, I flew back here after celebrating my 22nd wedding anniversary with my wife. And I met up, the day before, I met up with Daniel Alvarez. He's one of my students. He, I'll sh I don't know, Josiah, if you can zoom in on, if you can, don't worry about it, but I'm gonna try to show. So he sent me this message the other day. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but long text here. He did 1.138 million. This is at 45% profit margin. I'll just give him a second. And I met with him to help him with his brand. He's building out his brand. And keep it focused on there, I'm gonna show you something else. So just so you can see guys, we, we don't make this stuff up. This is a real person, a real live human being Oh, They're actually good people in this world. <laughs> They're actually sincere people. And I met with him and his niece to help him with his business. This guy is crushing it. You know why? because he's building a brand. Now, of course, I'm not gonna share details about what it is without his permission, but I will tell you this much, he invested a good amount of money into his brand book. What's a brand book? It's a book that says, here are the colors we use, here are the logos we use, here's our kind of customer. He hired a company who came in multiple times and interviewed him to make sure they could build a brand book so they can give that to any of their staff as they're building out this brand. And this is just one of his multiple brands on Amazon. And in that conversation, I said, look, you already get that the most important thing you can do is build your brand. My only question is, is it going to show like this on Amazon? Internally, 
He's got it. Now and he's selling an Amazon. The question is all that time invested in money in that internal brand book, how can you take that and make sure the world sees that? And he says, Seth, that's why we're starting outside accounts, outside of Amazon, so we could really be official about this. He's been doing this for years now and he's crushing it. The importance of your brand is so important. That's why when we build Amazon stores for businesses, we're building them into brands. Retail packaging is a little way of saying, hey, I'm not just a little product that you would find on a shelf somewhere in some warehouse shop. I'm an actual brand. Step or tip number eight. Show, sorry, we're still on tip number eight, my bad. Um, the next picture I wanted to show you was this one. Just take a minute to look at it. I actually personally really like this one. What do you guys think? I love this one. And see how it shows me all the different colors I can get it in? Heck, I can even get it in this like copper gold tone. This is beautiful. Okay, tip number nine. Show the product being used. Now, someone might say, well, Seth, isn't that a lifestyle photo? Yes and no. Let me explain. If it's the, what product on earth, let me go back. You could have a model featuring a tea mug and they're just holding it. That's not really using it. This is using it. You see the difference? I used it. People don't buy the mug so they can hold it. So if you just have a picture of them holding it, what are you doing? Like help them experience what it's like to use it. And this is one of my favorite examples. Here you have a brush. Okay, that's nice. It looks like it's floating in a white room. Aha, now that's engaging. You know what I love about this picture is not only does it show this woman's beautiful hair, but you can just barely see a faded blurry reflection of her in the mirror, but it, that draws your eyes to the brush and the right side where the hair is and on the left side, it's a little darker. That's a great picture. That's engaging. It, here's what it's doing. It's saying, look, you're not really buying a brush. You're investing in your beauty. See the difference? People don't buy a brush so they could say, hey, hey, look, I got a brush, isn't that cool? No, they do it so they can brush their hair to make it look nice or handsome or pretty or sexy, whatever you want. See the difference? You're selling an experience. This is a product being used. How about this one? Look at it, I love this one. So this is a strap for working out if you lift heavy weights. Here you can see up close, then you can see full perspective. Now, if we only showed me the woman who's ready to lift this barbell, entire body, it would be hard for me to know what the product is. Like I have to really zoom in, but because I see it in big context and then up close, now I get it. That's two pictures showing me how the product is being used. That is powerful. That will sell. Number 10 of the 15 tips I'm going to give you to find and create photos that blow the minds of your customers. Only use Photoshop if it is excellent. Let me show you. Take a minute to look at this picture. And when you think you're done looking, look again. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom in. You get the idea. This looks just ridiculous. Do not go with a picture. It's so obviously Photoshopped and fake. It's like, <laughs> it's cringy. Yes, you can use Photoshop. That's the purpose of Photoshop but only use it if it's used well. Now, let me show you how to use it effectively. This is not how to use it effectively. They are missing legs. Uh, that's not how to use it effectively. That is definitely not that 13 year old's body. This is a good example. Now watch. This is an excellent example. Now, how is that the case? Well, I want you to notice the background. Let's look at the good example first. It's good because even though what we're selling is the nozzle to the hose, it's showing me context like, hey, they're in a garden. Now, could you go out and get that picture taken in a garden? Of course you can, but you might be in a situation where it actually costs you less time and money and hassle to get someone who's really good at Photoshop to do that for you. But the reason the second one is an excellent example is because the background is faded. That does two things. Number one, it makes it look more realistic. But number two, it makes what is in the foreground, the hello beautiful mug, pop. And the background now complements it. Listen, everything in the picture has one goal, to draw your shopper's eye to what you want them to notice. 
The background in the second one is making me notice that really cool looking mug. Tip number 11 for how to get photos that blow the minds of your customers on Amazon. Use tech spec photos. Now I alluded to these earlier, now we're gonna go deep on them. A tech specs photo purpose is to show value. And it is the most important with a technology product or a complicated product. There's a lot of things that it's difficult to show in just a single photo. Like for example, the sense on that has sense. I, I wouldn't know that if they didn't show that to me visually with the picture of the hand. And notice it doesn't just around this, this digital code for the door. We use these, by the way, one very similar to this for real estate properties. Notice it doesn't just give you the words like Bluetooth 4.0, low energy connectivity. It shows you an image of Bluetooth. And I peep touch screen. It shows me the touch screen. You see that? Those images, it, this seller understands the value of visuals. What's going to happen is when you're first doing your product research, you're going to find all these amazing keywords like, man, this is a great keyword. This one, this one, this one. Then you have to ask yourself a simple question. How do I show these keywords visually? I can't just show the product. Sometimes I need to point out that this is actually stainless steel silver, that this is true cherry wood, that this is, this is awesome actually, this is clay. Hear that? That's clay. You wouldn't know this is clay if I just took a picture. You'd think it was plastic painted red, it's clay. So I gotta show that in a tech spec photo. Here's another example. I love this one. I mean, within half a second, I already know what it does. This super cool tumbler can keep my beverage very cold or very hot. And it looks cool too. Number 12, use infographics of positive reviews. I should have said an infographic. I'm missing, I'm missing a word there. Jay, you'll have to check my grammar on that one. <laughs> Now, people have asked me, Seth, is this against Amazon's terms of service? No, it's not. Are you sure? Yes, I am. So you mean you're taking a screenshot of the positive reviews? Actually, I'm not. What you're doing is one of your photos, whoops, one of your photos is first a picture. In this case, this is a posture corrector. Then you're putting five stars on there. It's implicative. It's a five-star product. And then you're literally typing in what people already shared publicly on your listing and then putting their name there and the first initial of the last name. This will help you convert better if you do this. Once you got a few good reviews, put it on there. You have nothing to lose. They shared it publicly, you share it publicly, here we go. Number 13, show the full bundle of value. Now this is one of the hardest things to do because it's so easy to do it wrong, but you gotta do it, especially if your product is more than just one piece. If there's more parts to it, where's my cap? Oh, well, it's not here, it's fine. But if there are more parts to it, you need to demonstrate that. So let me show you, look at the screen. Here we have a picture of the headphones. We have a picture of the instruction booklet, of the little holding case, and the retail packaging, and the cords that come with it. Do you know how hard it is to make cords look good in an image? If these were like six foot cords, you would need to wind it up. In this case, they just do a really perfectly straight curve. I can almost guarantee you that is either Photoshop or 3D to get that curve that straight. Doesn't matter as long as it's accurate and they can see it, that's what matters. This tells me this is more than just headphones. This is a kit. They even went further and they list every single thing there. You know how fun this is? Like you get to use so much creativity because you're not just trying to get pictures done so you can get selling. You're actually trying to create an experience for the shopper. Number 14, show before and after photos. You know how in the weight industry, this is really popular where someone shows the picture of them and they're overweight and then 12 weeks later, they're really cut. It works in, on Amazon as well and it doesn't have to have to do anything with health and weight. Look at this. Now, let me first qualify. I think the graphic they added after using and after using is terrible, it's hard to read, it doesn't stand out. I think it was a terrible choice of color. That blue with those white letters just is not good. So that's a bad example. But what's a good example is they do show me before and after. I mean, look at the cup holder. There's something nasty down there and then after. Now, a lot of Amazon sellers make this mistake. They dramatize it. They go in there and they crumble Cheerios. They wipe syrup on it. Maybe they spit on it, like they make it look nasty. 
and then a perfect picture and it looks fake. So make it a little dirty, realistically dirty. Some of you are like, Seth, I got little kids. I don't even have to try. It's, it's, it's really nasty. Okay, okay. <laughs> but just don't overdo it because it does make it look fake. A little dirty, very clean is the idea before and after. 15, last tip. Use a quantity decal to add value. Now, I'm not going to get into discussion whether or not you should do this on your featured photo. That's another topic for another day. But on one of your photos, you got to do this, you guys, if this is appropriate for your product. I mean, yes, I can count. It's one, two, three, four. Yeah, but by saying four piece, it actually looks cooler. Did you know that? It actually tells me more quickly, oh, it's four. Oh, yeah, this competitor only have three and this one has two and a quarter pieces. I'm going to get this one. Or if it's jumbo, huge, big one, jumbo. See what I mean? Show the value by putting it, by decal, I simply mean something that says the size, the number, the variety, something that makes it stand out from the competition. This is powerful. Okay, before I go on, because I'm gonna do a quick recap, if you like this video, if I've added value to your Amazon experience, will you do something for me right now? Will you thumbs up it? Thumbs up it? and subscribe because we will continue to come out with more and more content like this. And I'm very excited for you to see some new faces very soon behind the Just One Dime headquarters as well, which is exciting. So make sure you thumbs up it, make sure you subscribe if you've enjoyed the value today. Now, I'm gonna do a recap so you can just bring it all together and boom, knock out a home run so you can make money, so that you have margin to do the things you love with the people you love. Here's a recap. Grab their attention with your featured photo. Make them stop scrolling. Do something unique. Make it stand out. That means you got to look at the other featured photos and say, how is mine different? If mine looks like theirs, even if it looks good, why would they stop at mine? Yours has to be different. Differentiated. The same idea. Number two, show the best solution with your featured photo so they will click on your listing. I can't just notice it because it has a random gecko on the boot. I need to actually, oh, that might be what I want. They have the cutest little cat face inside that bubble backpack. Even though that they're not selling a cat, obviously, it still emo it engages me emotionally and I'm more likely to click on it. And then third, once I'm on the listing, I need to see massive value through all the photos. Every single photo needs to remove an objection. I'm gonna share with you a, a uh, technique you can use for converting your listing. When you create your listing, create a list of all the objections your customers are most likely to have and make every single photo remove one of those objections, like one by one by one, until you've left them with no reasons to, buy, to not buy, and all they can say is, yes, I'm your customer. That's how you do it. That's sales. People think, oh, you have to be a salesman. That means you have to talk to people. Uh-uh. You can do it through your listing on Amazon, and your photos are your, the salesperson's best friend. There are five main types of photos. Your featured, your lifestyle, your tech spec, your product images, and your competitor comparison or size reference. As a general rule, and it depends on the product, I recommend one featured, two to three lifestyle, one to two tech spec, two product image, and one competitor comparison or size reference. By the way, guys, jod.com, we just came out with a new blog. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I'm just gonna let you go find out. You need to go read it. Um, it's free. Go to jod.com and go read the latest blog. It is awesome. Okay, 15 tips, quick recap. Take photos from your customer's point of view. If the product is wearable, use a model. Use 3D renders for plastic, metal, or smooth products. Show all variations in one image. Use organization and symmetry. Show intricate detail and texture. Remember the fuzzy carpet between your toes? Use colors that pop. <coughs> Excuse me, that <coughs> made me cough. <clears throat> and props that enhance. Show superb retail packaging. Show the product being used. Only use Photoshop if it's excellent. Use tech spec photos. Use infographics of positive reviews. Show the full bundle of value. Show before and after photos. And use quantity decals to add value. Now, Go to jod.com, make sure you like and subscribe. Two things I'm asking you to do. Go to jod.com, look at the latest blog, like and subscribe today. If you are curious more about Just One Dime and what we do, we are headquartered right here in Austin, Texas. We're actually building new headquarters right down the street, which we're very excited about. 
We have students and investors coming by pretty regularly just to say hi or to meet. You're always welcome to, to do that. Just email help at jod.com. Last thing I wanna say is your greatest opportunity for success is what goes on up here. Your brain is really powerful. Make sure you fill your brain with truth. Make sure you challenge yourself every day. Even if you have to just take a cold shower to get over fears, like whatever you need to do, you can build your business. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done and one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. It is not easy. If, if you're averse to risk and averse to challenge, don't become an Amazon seller. But if you're like, man, I wanna change my life. I wanna build something that actually matters. I want something that lasts for a long time into the future, then become an Amazon seller. The opportunity for you is huge. Will it be easy? No. Will you change and grow? Yes. You have an awesome day.